think about where, what the role, the remedy is, even al um, alchemically, in um, making or allowing or facilitating the admissibility to consciousness of something that has such strong force to it that the ego can't admit it, as in this case with the young man, with the arsenicum, his mafioso side that couldn't be brought into consciousness, even though in his life drama it was clearly there in his relationship at work. Um, then the arsenicum proved to be extremely helpful in facilitating his participation in working with you, allow, examining mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this darker side of himself. And where, how, say in such a circumstance as we just saw, how a remedy there would be quite, maybe not essential, but certainly highly helpful to the person in facilitating the analytical or the individuation process. That's my question. I didn't hear any question. You stated something to which I agree. Uh, but what is the question? Well, great minds think alike, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I, I actually, it wasn't. You, when you phrased that example yesterday, you, like many things you did yesterday, you touched on some very important points. And that was one that it seemed to me got passed over, at least as I was listening fairly quickly. And it was a question that I have a, a deep interest in is where where we can spend months and even years at, um, at a loggerhead with a complex mm -hmm. because of its instinctual force or its numinous force. It's just too great. Or even in the first dream today, the, the ecstatic experience is just too much for the ego to assimilate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that um, the, the, actually the vital importance, uh, pun intended, mm -hmm. where homeopathy comes in to, to facilitate that, and that one's search possibly can be more towards a deeper understanding of the remedy rather than necessarily um, the interactional. Well, let me say this for myself. The issue is simple. Wherever I see a remedy sticking out and I have a chance to give it, I'll give it. Mm -hmm. And worry afterwards why it worked. <laughs> right. Because uh, no matter what, and really what it does and why it does and how it does, we don't know. But we do know, I believe, we know and I know, that as I said, it puts you closer to, to Tao. It puts you closer, enabling you to be where you need to be. How it does it, God knows, I don't. So whenever I have a chance to give it, and with that I mean, are you a psychotherapist? Uh, yes. See, there is a transference issue. Yeah. That is sometimes a hindrance. Yeah. That's why I rather ref may refer rather than give the remedy mm. myself. Mm. I'm already so much God Almighty that there's not any more God Almightiness. Mm. I need that like a hole in the head then. Yes, in fact, when I've given remedies, sometimes there's this joke I make to myself as if I'm giving the host. Yes, exactly. And it isn't a joke. Well, yes. And it may not be advisable sometimes to give, give the host, host. yes. Yeah. At least not yet or whatever. So mm -hmm. I may refer. Now, for some people you can't refer either for this or the other reason. For instance, they don't believe in that, in that nonsense. So in that case, you have to do without. Yeah. But whenever possible, I'll give it. If I see it, if I don't see it, I won't give it. And ask the questions afterwards. Okay. So purely pragmatic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I have a couple comments and probably a question or two in here. I found it, first of all, interesting that um, as yesterday you said that our dreams sort of knock on our head and then knock on our head and then beginning to get louder and that she's had many dog dreams before and this is the first one that's really taken a bite of her. Mm hmm and it was interesting that it was on her... I don't have many dog dreams before. Oh, not many dog dreams, but this is... Just in general, I have a fear of dogs. Just generally have a fear of dogs, oh, okay. Which is the same thing. Same thing, same thing. But it, and also, it's intriguing that it bit her left leg. 
Uh, which I understand is the unconscious side. No, no, necessarily. That I would have to go and now find out what do you feel about left and right. Uh -huh. You avoid, you know this is a possibility, but it's better to avoid the schematization. Uh -huh. It's, uh, again, these are grand themes, left, right, for instance, male, female, but always the individual variation. Yeah, for instance, I'm left-handed. Left-handed to me might be more... Uh, uh, versus sort of... the whole thing, for sure, instance. Sure, sure, sure. Also, when she was talking about her in-laws, she was also talking about them almost wanting to muzzle her. Yes. And when she was talking about the, the things in her teeth, she kept saying, well, just to kill her. I mean, was it coming into your mind that, that no, this is a type of muzzling and that trying to get you to stop talking? And I kept sort of squirming, thinking... They are the two halves of the, co of the same coin. Unless there is something vicious in me, I don't feel the need to muzzle. And if I project the being muzzle outside, I need to say something here maybe about projection. Projection is not a willful ascribing to something else, to the other. It has nothing to do with will at all. It is not a defense either. Projection is the fact, the fact, the fact, that whatever is part of ourselves, and wants to become part of our conscious selves, meets us as though from the outside. So projection is a bona fide delusion, but a bona fide delusion. It appears as though it were there because that's the only way I'm as yet capable of seeing it. Now it may, of course, say whoever projection has a hook, it usually chooses uh, rewarding subjects for it. They have a little bit of it at least, but it usually exaggerates. And the only way one can put this in your, I remember this, the only way one can separate a projection from a perception of reality is that the projection looks exactly like reality, only more so. So when I'm absolutely dead convinced they're after me, this is a projection. When I feel, well, maybe they're after me, maybe, maybe not, then I may be picking up a piece of reality. But whatever gets under my skin, positively or negatively, is a potential aspect of myself. So in principle, ask, but don't do it, but in your mind, ask anybody what he can stand the least, and he will give you a piece of self-description. But bona fide, unknowingly. So, where are we here? So, if I feel always under threat of being muzzled, mm -hmm. then I perceive an unconscious need of muzzling myself. Why do I need to muzzle myself? Because I am up under the pressure of something. Dangerous. Rajan Sankaran talks about um, remedies uh, and people as plant, mineral, or animal. And uh, do you work at all of that to get a sense of if, if they have any of those qualities about? And in this case, in fact, I'm almost be curious if anyone else has any thoughts about this in terms of uh, when a person has, you know, a fear of dogs and um, at the same sense uh, it has a fear of wild things, so would that make them more animal-like or more rock-like? I would say it has, we all have, an, have animal and plant and mineral life in ourselves. In other words, we have a physical body, we have an invisible Kirlian body that carries, yeah, that's what Kirlian photographed. Oh, Kirlian, right. Kirlian, right. Which is on the plant level, namely the biological functions. We have an emotional aspect, which is on the animal level and they have a human, mental, and spiritual aspect. So they all are there, and the tensions and polarities and, and, and uh, pathologies sure. move through. Sort of a Neapolitan ice cream or something. I cannot, <laughs> something maybe emphasize, but I'm a, I, have, I feel uncomfortable with too strict a categorization, the way of pigeonholing. These are dreams from last night, and um, 
There are three of them, which may be too much, but I'm trying to make mm -hmm. them short. <clears throat> um, the first one, I dreamed that um, the Mafia were plotting. The Mafia get, was? The Mafia were plotting. Yeah. They're making a plot um, to get the good guys. And um, it looked like they were going to really, they were going to win the Mafia. But somehow I let the good guys know that there was going to be a problem. And they managed to um, hold their own and kind of make the Mafia go away. But I was still worried that there was danger, so I took the weapon. And I don't, I don't remember what the weapon was. It was either a knife or a gun. And I, I threw it into a pond to get rid of it. And, um, and then a little frog came along and swallowed the weapon. A frog? A frog, a little green frog. And um, that was the end of that dream. And the next dream, um, there are a group of us from this seminar, six to eight of us from this seminar. From this seminar. And um, we're going, you're, you're giving this seminar, we're going to the seminar, but it's off in a forest in a private retreat. And we, and it's evening, and we get there for the seminar. And the next thing I know, the seminar is over, and I'm trying to find out what happened. In fact, I think I'm even somebody else at that point. And um, you have turned into a woman, and um, a woman that apparently was very hard on us in this seminar, really like kicked our asses, I guess is what, what people were saying. and. Um, and the purpose was that we were to um, pay our dues. And that somehow, by doing this, we had. It was good. I mean, it was good. It, it, was, it was a difficult time, but we felt good about it when we realized that that's what the purpose of it was. And that was the end of so that So does dream. it seem that her sternness was necessary, or, or did she overdo it? That the sense was, I think it was a bit overdone, but there was not resentment after the fact. There might have been resentment while it was happening, but after the fact, it seemed like it was appropriate, and um, that well, there was a sense that we were mature, and it was like something that that needed to happen. And then in the third dream. At that point, I went back to sleep and I asked for another dream. And in the third dream, I'm back at um, a movie theater on the main street of Rocky River, Ohio, which is where I grew up. So it's the old movie theater. And again, the seminar is going to be there. And I'm Who going. Was there? The seminar. Yeah. So the seminar is going to be there. And um, the theater has changed a little bit because it's more like an arts theater now. But it's still kind of like the same old theater. And I have my car. I'm trying to park my car underneath the theater so I can go to the seminar. And um, I have this sense that I'm supposed to clean up my car. There's just a lot of stuff in it. And I'm trying to sort and clean up my car before I go into the seminar. And um, that's where the dream ends. Any reaction? Yeah. Well, um, some things feel familiar. I mean, like the mafia and the good guys and trying to get rid of the weapon instead of resolving the thing between them. Um, and ending with my car. I mean, I, I just feel like I'm lugging around a lot of shit right now in, in, in my car, in my house, in my office. And so I was sort of thinking, well, this is not <laughs> new news to me. Um, and it, it seems strange, but my car is my way of going with, with all this stuff in it. And it was... Um, well, what is a familiar thing? What is the, uh, to you, the uh, accustomed shit? Paper and overload and... Um, I mean psychologically. <sighs> overload? Overload, um, psychologically. 
Um, not standing up for myself, I guess. That must be the end. I don't know. I mean, it's a good question. What was your state of mind when you <clears throat> last night and you had to sleep? Well, um, I was pretty upset. Mm -hmm. um, because um, it meant a great deal to me to come to this seminar and to see you again. And the feeling that I somehow got disconnected from work that I started, and um, and I don't know what to do about that. So it was a matter <coughs> of a connection with me. With something, I did, with this yes. room, with these people, with I don't know, with something that. Um, what am I? You're the the person who gave me the homeopathy. And um, you're the person who helped me get started on my path. That's the way I feel. Mm -hmm. And what was that path? I don't know. Well, why call it? Why do you call it a path? Because that's the way it felt. It, it felt like I was, I was headed in one direction then I got the pain, I got my back pain, and um, then I had to come to see you because I couldn't get help any other way. And, and somehow things got turned around for me at that point, and I got started in a different direction. I mean, I paid attention to my feelings, my emotions, my dreams, my inner mm -hmm. life, all of that. Now, who was that woman into whom I turned? I don't know. Look I don't know who now. she was. Look at her now. I can describe her, but I don't know who she is. No, um, describe her. Describe she, her if you can, sort of characterologically. She's maybe about 65, 70, and she's very stern. And she's wearing like a very matronly pink suit, though. But it, it's pink, but it's very matronly. And she has a very um, stern and matronly way about her. Does this characterization remind you of anybody whom I ever knew in your well, life? Well, it, it kind of reminds me of, um, no, not anybody I knew in my life. It, it, it kind of reminds me of, um, I don't want to be disrespectful because I never met these people, but some of the women who trained with Jung, how I imagined they might have mm -hmm. been later on. Namely? Um, well, like maybe, um, I can't think of her name now. I don't mean Elizabeth Harding. Who would the other one have been? Um, Frances Wicks? No, another one. Eleanor Bettine? Or Who? Eleanor Bettine, or that was the one? Uh, it's another one. No, they're not. The, 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 the library. Uh, oh, dear me, I'm getting feeble, feeble minded too. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that doesn't, name yeah. doesn't matter. Again, what, uh, what do you associate to them? I don't think I like them very much. And what do you dislike about them? Um, see, it's not, it's not all of them. See, what, like it wouldn't have been Jaffe, but it would have it sort of, I don't know, like these army sergeant kinds of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. women. How would they? Or respond to the situation in which you find yourself currently? Or rather, to make it quicker, be one of them and talk to Barbara. Young lady, stop being indecisive and just get your act together and move. Mm -hmm. Make a decision. Stick with it. And what do you dislike about that? There's nothing I dislike about that. No, but you felt in the dream she was too stern, too, too sergeant-like. Well, the problem is that in the dream, either I wasn't there, or if I was there, I became somebody. I don't know what happened. 
um, I was just running around afterwards trying to pick up pieces of the story. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, let's do this aside. What about this seminar then? What, uh, what does this represent to you? Well, for one thing, I'm understanding some things that I didn't understand before. I, I came with a question that I was going to ask you, and then you spent all yesterday morning on it. <laughs> and I didn't ask the question. And, um, I will ask it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it had to do with um, when it's appropriate to for the re when does the remedy work and when does the psychological work is that required and the the feeling that I'd had um, looking back on my experience is that I hadn't you know, here we go I hadn't worked that hard that um, I had the pain I was given the remedy it took a long time for the remedy to, to, to in kick in but in the past yes. that I hadn't I, you know, that maybe I hadn't done the psychological work that I needed to do. Mm. And then when you were talking about, well... So in other words, you were delinquent in getting well too easily. <laughs> I was delinquent? Wait, say that again. In getting... In I was getting delinquent. rid of your pain too, too easily without working hard enough. Yeah. That's the language of the army sergeant. Yeah. <laughs> is this what you are telling yourself? Well, since since moving here, I've had pain and I've had to work with it myself because I didn't know um, what to do. And the most useful thing to me in working with the pain has been making myself go to yoga uh, to the point where the pain isn't there anymore. And so... I don't think I would have done that um, years ago. And it was hard work doing that. Mm -hmm. And it, it took a while to get the payoff. And so, I don't know if it's delinquent so much, but somehow, yes, that I didn't work hard enough. The seminar was in a movie house of your childhood. What memories do you have to that? The really place? good, good, good memories. Namely, that's where we go every Saturday. It was the big treat. It was. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, there were a lot of things I didn't like doing when I was growing up um, because my mom just filled our life with activity. She wanted us to have everything that she couldn't have as a child, so we had. Brownie Scouts and Girl Scouts and drama and blah, blah, blah. But I love going to the movies. That was not an obligation or a difficult thing to do. I loved it. It was an indulgence of a sort. That pleasure. It was a treat. Treat. <laughs> yeah. Now how about this, uh, this seminar being held in the place of a treat? It feels like a real treat. Yes, yeah, like, a, like a treat. And I don't want it to be over. But you're feeling you're not getting it. You're, you're missing something. Mm -hmm. How is... I'm, what's that? Um, I feel that I'm missing something here. Or yeah, in that... In the dream I'm not getting to there because yeah. I'm stuck in my car. Yes. Perhaps, let's go to that. What, what, what about your car? Your present car, your past car? It's my present car, and it had more in it than usual. <laughs> well, what is it that you feel that this experience here may be offering you that somehow you feel you are not getting because you are stuck in, 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 your, in your goal, in your old stuff, in, in your going, what you say, with your old stuff? Mm, I don't know. I, I'm afraid that when I when it's over, I'll just go home and go back mm -hmm, to my mm -hmm. old stuff, even though I don't want to, because I don't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. And so it's more like um, like old old habits, you know, my job, my this, my that, and 
and none of it is um, it's it's stressful but not burdensome I mean it's not bad enough to mm -hmm. require me to to hurt enough you mean to do something yeah. about it what about the mafia what's the mafia what makes the mafia mafia well they're just um They're, well, okay, the Mafia, initially, they, they set out to um, do something good, i.e. to take care of their own, mm -hmm. um, which means that they had to develop a different set of rules. Namely? Um, I don't know, I mean... Blood Brotherhood, etc. Um, I mean, it started out good. Take care of the family, etc., etc., etc. And then at some point, it got linked up with organized crime, and then it became um, what well, asocial or outside the system, but an evil thing outside the system. And, uh, well, what's good and what's evil? They are the good guys and they are the bad guys. What makes the good guys good and what makes the bad guys bad? Oh, well, I guess the rules by which you decide that you're going to kill somebody. <laughs> Explain. Yeah. Well, I think of the Mafia as having, at some point, gotten involved in greed and killing. I, mean, I guess it's the greed, maybe. The, it's it's mm -hmm. it's the greed, the lust for money and power, that um, changed a, something that was potentially good into something that uh, is evil. Now, be one of the good guys. Tell me what makes you tick. I care for people a lot, and I care for life. Um, a lot. I, I don't believe in hurting or killing people if if it's unnecessary. Uh, I don't understand why the mafia are out to get us. No, <laughs> go over now to the mafia side and answer his. Explain to him why you. Because that's what we do. We just get people now, and you're, you're there. I mean, you're the next target. So you're too bad. And what do you want of me? Pardon? What do you want of me? I'm the good guy. I want your life. I want blood. What for? Because that's what I do. I like to kill. How, how is that? Well, I just... That's who I am. That's what I am. Yeah, but what does it feel like? It feels very matter-of-fact. It, it feels... Um, you're next. I mean, oh, it's the game. It's part of the game. You're, you're next up. It's your number now. Where is that conflict in you? Between... Caring and I want what I want, just the way it is. On money, power. I don't know. I'm I'm not aware of it. Well, again, go back, be now a mafioso, and tell me what makes you tick. Um, this, this is my life. These are the I, these are the rules I was given, and so these are the rules that I play by. I don't have a choice. So, who gave you the rules? Um, 
I want to say my father, but then my father wouldn't do something like that. I don't. They're just they're they're part of the my community. No, but yes, but it's, it seems to me <clears throat> maybe the point is this: this are the this is a situation that was given to me, and I have no choice. I may not, out of my own feeling, get out of of the pattern. So you can you yeah, relate that I, to that? Yes, yes. Can you... That's the way I feel in about my life right now. Mm -hmm. And why can't you go against the rules? Um. <coughs> well, I want to... This seems like a cop-out. Um, what I want to say is I don't know how. You go against the rules for a while, but sooner or later it catches up with you. Um, it would be temporary freedom, but... How does it catch up with you? Well, what I want to say is the... Hmm. Well, this has happened to me. I mean, if I go away for a vacation or something, um, I, I become a different person. And I'm relaxed, I'm not stressed, I'm clear, I'm a lot of things, but then I come back and it's the, it's the same thing again. So, like, I know, I know that I'm not the stressed out person that I feel like most of the time. When you go on vacation, you have not yet gotten out of the rules. You have taken a vacation. The, the mafia boss has merely gone uh, on the sojourn, do I know what, to ad Argentina. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but he's, he's still what he is. In other words, the motivation seemingly of the mafia that you explained is uh, success, money, security, possession. These are the rules that determine. Mm -hmm. And against this individual, individual desires, needs don't seem to matter. Right. And that's your. Yeah. So you are to be a money-making machine. Or at least sustenance providing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes, yeah. In other words, you don't work in order to live, you live in order to work. Yeah. Now what about the knife and the frog? Well, it felt I it's strange. I mean it, it felt like that now that the frog swallowed this whatever it is, knife, um, the, the the conflict won't arise again because the weapon mm -hmm, isn't there. Mm -hmm. What about the knife? What sort of a knife is it? I don't know. I don't I don't know if there's a knife or a gun or what. That part uh -huh. I just don't remember, but I I just remember I got rid of the weapon. Okay, now what about the frog? What's a frog to you? I've never heard of frogs. What's what the, what's, what's yeah. the name? I don't know, it's such a cute little green frog. Um, I mean, it's a little frog. It wasn't yeah. even a big frog. And it was just there, Be you know? Be a frog. Be a little mm -hmm. cute frog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're all night. I think I'll go eat the knife. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like? <laughs> it's fine. But I, it doesn't hurt. I mean, you'd think it'd be dangerous to a little frog swallow a big yes, knife. But how do you feel in yourself as you, as you frog it like that? Um, really good. Um, go back now, be the, be the mafia guy.
And I'll be the frog. Mm -hmm. Mafia guy. Frog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the difference? Well, my body is flowing, and 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 I'm uh, I'm happy. I feel young. Yeah, but I feel in, 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 okay. Go be the frog, and go to, back to your rural life Ooh. as a frog, Ooh. and uh, deal with it frog fashion. Boy. The frog just wants to run and hide. And hide? Yeah, it's just so little. He's lost his guts about life swallowing. Oh, save. I don't know, I'm having a hard time with this one. Hmm? I'm having a hard time with yeah, this one. Yeah, don't take your time. So go be the frog and go. Yes, in other words, reapproach. Your life, your life pattern, in in the frog way, to find out how the frog would deal with it. I see. Okay. Well, with a sense of humor, for one thing. Mm -hmm. um, No, I can't get any more. I can't get any farther with it than that. I just see the frog taking things lightly, mm -hmm. um, and um, well, no, okay, no. If you were to <coughs> take your present situation humorously and more lightly, what space for unfoldment might it give you? How might it help you with the? This is rigid pressure. I don't know. I mean, I'd have to see, I guess. It, it's hard to imagine. See, you have <coughs> here the frog. On the other hand, the sergeant therapist. In this case, your own therapist. The way you look at the therapist and try to help yourself. One says, you better. The frog says, <laughs> Yeah. So, in other words, you are playing a mafia on yourself. Also. Yeah. You have got to be a, a good guy and do something for the world or whatever, or you are a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And obviously, since one just can do it like this, down you go. Mm -hmm. You are among the damned. Mm -hmm. And you pass the hardest judgment on yourself. Yeah, I can see that. Now, also in the second dream, the seminar is taking in the woods. Take place in the woods. What woods? Mm, I don't. It was almost like a magic forest kind of. Uh, it was, uh, you know, like with a gingerbread house type mm -hmm. um, log cabin, but it was spacious, and um, it was you know it was evening and it was dusk and maybe there were fireflies. What sort of a world is that? What what's going on in such a fairy tale? Spin it out, the fairy so it's tale. It's exciting. It's um, mm, it's alive. There's some enchantment, maybe even uh, uh, some magic, some mystery. Mm -hmm. um, adventure. But out of the gingerbread house comes the the witch therapist. Mm -hmm. Gives you the works. <clears throat> what seems to appear here is a splitting tendency 
either life is hard work and doing playing by the rule and grabbing money, or it is uh, some mm -hmm. uh, again romantic, wonderful, and the two mm -hmm. cannot. Mm -hmm. The one That's excludes good. the other. That's good. Yeah. That's good. But the implication seems to be that there's lots of real way. Yeah. And remember, the frog is also the frog prince. Yeah, I, didn't, I thought about that. <laughs> yeah. And that, but that, and this princely quality is, lies here in Cuba and mm -hmm. taking it easy and uh, breathing. Mm -hmm. Frogs are great breathers, you know. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, because their bellies go in and yeah. out. And, yeah or their throats, or whatever that is, yeah. In, out, taking it in, you know, the giving ones have space. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, your question was, I am stuck here, what am I to do? How can I get out of it? It's I'll make a list of rules and yeah, get myself yeah, out, yeah. 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 Well, there's nothing I'm going to get out of it. Yeah. And lives have space within it. Not either or, but either and or. Mm -hmm. This is really good. And you see, in giving yourself those rigid, this time good mafia demands, you're you're cutting off your own breath. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, also the contrast uh, in your childhood, the overprogram, the overwork, or do this, do this, and this, and then comes a great treat. And then I go back again to, to the grindstone. So it is all black-white polar, polar, polarization. Yeah, I can, I can, I can see that. Anything in the dream, in the three dreams that we left, it, that we all, that we didn't touch? Well, the, the, the car loaded with all that stuff, is that's, that's the rules and just like... Is it? Go, I don't go, know. I, go into the car, look what's in there. Oh. <laughs> I don't tell. <laughs> Oh, I mean, you know, like their pencil stubs and wads of paper and um, my laundry and um, uh, receipts for the IRS and, um, uh, oh, I don't know, there's a shoe over there that I've been looking for. What prompted this, ooh, what, what, what did you find so particularly? Repulsive. Oh, it makes me sick. What? What makes you sick? Oh. <sighs> all that disorganization. All, oh, it really, it really, um, it really bothers me. It really bothers me. What? Just all that stuff that's, that, that needs, I mean, physical stuff that needs sorting. Um... And I don't know how to handle it. Uh, do you need all of it? Mm -mm. Could you throw out some of it? Mm -hmm. But I have to go through it all first. Uh, where is it in your life psychologically? Oh, where is it in my life psychologically? You know, I really don't know, and I really have a visceral reaction to that, and I don't know where it is psychologically. Stay with the reaction and see what comes to Oh, it just makes me want to vomit. Yes, just... now what comes up? <sighs> stay, stay with it. Go ahead, make yourself even more, vom more, more vomitable. And just pick up whatever image, memory, or whatever comes up. just want to scream, shout, I mean, just... just... Go ahead, scream, shout. Well, I can act. I mean, just like, yeah! Yeah! Ugh! 
that kind of feeling. Yeah, and so in respect to what aspect of your life do you, present or past, do you have it? I don't like my life. What do you dislike about it? I, I don't, I... I just feel like I'm going in a circle. I don't know, I mean, back to the rules or back, I, I don't know. Well, in that image here, there is probably something in the car that you need. Mm -hmm. IRS rec receipts I wouldn't lightly throw away. <laughs> you might. <laughs> but there's also a lot of junk that you could just throw out. Yeah. So somewhere uh, you would be seeming to overload yourself indiscriminately with... Uh, whatever, needs, obligations, rules, or whatever, that could be done without. Maybe you could ask the frog to look at that stuff and see what, 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 what uh, invite him in, see what does he So I'd have to give him a set of rules. <laughs> the frog? How would you give the frog a set of rules? Yeah. What is it, what comes to your mind first in, that you feel you must have? Must have? Have, yeah. Probably my IRS receipts. Um, I mean, something like that, the, my official stuff. Official stuff? Or? Of that stuff, whatever the official, of what's in the car? No, no, I mean, no. Just in general? What must in, in I life, have? Yes, psychologically. Um, my privacy, my free space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What interferes your pri with your privacy? Well, nothing right now. Well, you, you just asked me what, like, what is the priority or what is... Yes, yes, that's the point. <laughs> I'm trying to see if we can, maybe we cannot do it now, but to get a sense of priorities. Because mm -hmm. the issue here is there's a lot of trash that has low priorities still carried around. Mm -hmm. So it may be a matter of you don't have to do it now to ask yeah. yourself what really are my priorities. Yeah. And what can I do without, even though I find it difficult to... A lot of freedom rests after all in being able to do without. And lastly, again, a mm -hmm. good deal of mafia still is physical possession. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much that plays into your anxieties. Yeah, it, it, it does. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I think the priority thing is to be worked on. It's good. Do you feel that you, unless you play it exactly by the rules, you lose your job? Yeah. Is that realistic? Hmm? Is that realistic? Mm. I, I don't, I wouldn't know. Ask the frog. Um, I would eventually. It wouldn't, like, happen immediately. But eventually I would. Is that the frog? Yeah. Oh, we did. yes, the frog. He said that? He says that, yeah. Okay, let me... Well, things would change. That's what the frog says. Mm -hmm. Things things would change. Who knows? Just have to change things and see what happens. But the frog would go ahead and give it a shot. Mm -hmm. What is the knife that you feel being threatened with? What is the knife? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have a sense of a knife, you feel a knife on your throat. Yeah, don't talk. Mm -hmm. 
Don't talk to whom? Just don't speak out. Does that oppress you? Yes. How about speaking out frog like? Not like the sergeant, but playfully, humorously. Mm -hmm. Practical magic. Practical magic. Practical magic. magic. Yeah. This, you know, I mean, it's still it's like it's in my head thinking about this all. But it, it I mean, yes, I think, I, it, I think, um, it makes sense to be able to connect with this. That dream, you see, <coughs> doesn't give any long range answers, but it gives a sort of a, a notion where you are stuck now. Mm -hmm. Where you are sort of caught, it cannot find your way any further because it's in the, such an either or deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that way. So the point it makes is okay, it was a reason you can see into something you show up. Okay. Yeah, it's reassuring too. Perhaps I want to make a mark. You see, when I heard the name, I was completely baffled. You know what's up, what's down, where do we go? It's, it's in this interplay, looking here, looking there, trying this, that if you have enough patience, that uh, something comes up eventually. No questions? Remedy? No idea. <laughs> In other words, because of her back pain. No. I would I would now go and take the symptoms of the back pain and the dialysis. The only thing can be said that Generally, and I repeat, generally, I have <coughs> found that back pains, back aches, often have to do with a rigidity of a sort connected with mother. Mother, either a rigid mother or a rigid relation to, or a feeling compelled to toe the line, or something of the sort. But this is a rather vague, general observation, and I wouldn't make it too hard and fast to rule. However, you don't find it. In, however, you don't find it in the repertory anyway. <laughs> so you are on your own here. Um, maybe it's a connection with the previous question. Um, let's say that a patient comes with a back, back problem and I'm taking the case and do you have any dreams? The person goes through a dream that I perceive that is an important dream. Mm -hmm. uh, this person doesn't have a psychological background. What do you mean with that? Um, they don't know very Everybody much. Everybody has a psychological background. Well, um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about, um, you know, a person that never had any exposure to psychology, 
Yeah. Maybe you, know, you don't have people like that in New York. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> in Eugene, Oregon. In New York, the only sages. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, I'm talking a person that doesn't ha know about psychology, mm -hmm. and they they are coming because they have back problems right. and a wart and and something else. So um, I perceive that there is something important in the dream. I cannot do the type of work that you are doing with people that are coming and telling those dreams. What kind of feedback, if any, can I give to a person that doesn't have that psychological openness? How can I... What bring? feedback do you give to a person that is not able to give you enough symptoms to, for prescribing? Um, I ask for more questions. Uh, uh, what feedback? Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't, let's say probably I would say um, I I don't have enough symptoms. Can you tell me a little bit more? Can you? I don't say no, 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 no. No, that's all. That's all. I guess I'll do my best with the information that I have. Exactly. Right. <laughs> that applies to this as well. Yeah. 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 The, the, what, See, what the art is always to do the possible. Yeah. Not the desirable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's important. Yeah. Yeah, what I what I want to what I wanted to bring up is that I, I feel that I have this information that I I I could present the the information that you desire ideally simply is not always available. Mm -hmm. I raised the question yesterday: What do you do with a child in initial fever, and you have no symptoms to go on? But I, I somehow I have the sim I have the symptoms I have I have the information but I don't know how to give it back. Um, let's say let's say I I I have this child that um, um, you know I have not not I have this patient yes. the child he is has been adopted and has a lot of fears of abandonment and mm -hmm. and um, doesn't want his mother to leave any minute right. and. Mm. And I had that information, but he's not open somehow for mm -hmm. me to give that information. Mm -hmm. I feel that I'm stuck with where either I find the remedy or Precisely. I don't. Yes. yes. And my question is, what do you do when you have that information, but you feel that the person in front of you is, is not open or... There is a biblical answer for that. Good. <laughs> And I will quote it to you verbatim. Be innocent as the doves and clever as the serpents and do not throw pearls before the swine. Mm -hmm. Who said that? Anybody know who said that? Hmm? Jesus said that in his instruction to his disciples. Mm -hmm. It's as good a instruction then and now as it was then. Mm -hmm. You don't answer questions that have not been asked. Because you will either not be heard or you will be resented. Mm -hmm. See, the situation that you describe is one that is where the, uh, re there is no one to receive it. So, there's mm -hmm. no point getting it. It's a matter in those cases only to... You can start to giving a hint and imply something and see if you get the response. Mm -hmm. If you don't get the response, forget it. Good. That, that was my question. Yeah. It never is uh, appreciated if you, if you break in a door that is shut. You will only be... They will only call the police. Thanks. What is that line from the Bible again? Pardon me? What is that line? It's in Matthew. 
It is be innocent as the doves and, uh, and clever as the serpents. And do not throw pearls before the swine. I know uh, most ministers won't like that. <laughs> there it is. Do you want to do? I wonder if. No, please come out, come on. I wondered whether you would uh, mention something like TMS, the idea that physical pain can be caused by a lack of oxygen, as if the mind sends a message to the autonomic nervous system to deprive it of oxygen. By the frog and, image, you mean? Um, well, in a lot of aspects of this, of the d dream and also of this previous question, uh, that the pain is something that's unconsciously created in order to avoid dealing with the emotional issues. Uh, no doubt, but you see, to say that uh, can find in such a situation is uh, a bit like a preaching. It is saying you are avoiding something. It sounds a bit like it's your fault. Even well, though even though this is true, it is not directly ordinarily under our control. As the issue is or put it, take it in terms of this dream. This dream, in simple terms, says, just take it easy. Simplistically said it. Now, if that can be heard, what you are talking is likely to happen. I can see that. I just thought that this information, which I only came upon recently, was useful in that it gives a person something external to clarify the fact that what's happening in the pain is not due to a physical abnormality, it's nothing to worry about, this is something that happens to lots of people, and it makes it something easier to handle. That could be, but it may not be, it may not be either. For instance, in this situation here, given that situation, I'm in no position to have no information whether this is nothing to worry about. That's right. One has to eliminate uh, and find out if the physical pain is due to something like okay, cancer yes. or one of those things. But, but then, if that's eliminated... But you see, then I follow the guide from the unconscious rather than what I read. Mm. And I assume if, for instance, what is necessary, that is necessary to inform take it easy, it, is, it doesn't matter, the dream will bring it up. This is a, a very important issue. See? It is a different, I would say this is a fundament almost of the Jungian approach, that you do not go by what you think or what you believe is the thing, but you follow what from the transpersonal other you are being told. This idea that I know is sometimes helpful, but more often than not dangerous and destructive. Because it so easily leads to foisting one's own notions and ideas upon the patient. Therefore I always stress, as this is here, remember that you don't know and you cannot know. The best information you have may be, for all you know, perfectly invalid in a given situation. And it's unbelievable what weird ways sometimes... For instance, here, the dilemma is, should I do this or should I do that? Should I get out of my job, essentially, and do something else, or, or stay in the job? No one can say, we've got to do this or that, but the dream says neither. 
it's not it's not whether you are in the job or not. It's, it's a way. It is a way that you are in the job. Now, I couldn't have figured out in a thousand years. And if, for instance, if I had told her, well, it is nothing. It's, you know, it's just if you breathe more readily, it will be better. I don't think it would have helped. I had one other question was about the knife, that the image of the frog swallowing it painlessly, evidently not hurt, had something about including Yes, the, yes, and, including and, that which cuts it apart, yeah, but it also... And it, and it loses its uh, mm -hmm. hurtfulness. Right, right, exactly. But it is also, it makes a frog a magical frog. Yeah. Therefore, it was meant to me, when that happens, that frog is the key. Yeah. That frog has something that is needed. And uh, uh, this motive comes off in fairy tale. It's something that you cannot handle, the magical animal can handle. Instead of solving the problem, it dissolves it. Yeah, in its own way. Yeah. So I only could give her the frog and say, no, oh, yeah, yeah, feed into it. Without knowing how it would how it would be done. Oops, you have to disentangle me. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, image of a frog today is presently being thought of as the canary in the coal mine. Uh, what? The, what? The, <laughs> the symbol of the frog today in ecology is being oh. thought of as like the canary in the coal mine, is that whenever frogs mm -hmm. are dying, it's because we are uh, polluting. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, uh, if you know Richard Grosinger of North Atlantic Books, who I co-publish with, he, he's changed, or he's publishing half of his books now under the name Frog Publishing, um, which I had a little difficulty with as an image. but. Um, with this bigger, larger symbol, I, I've been intrigued. And I'm wondering, um, does a frog mean anything other than some, um, does it have any symbolism? In this well, look at the frog. Where do you find frogs? How do frogs live? You always come to a body of water, or more likely to a st swamp part of the body where water merges with the firm, where things are mushy. And there they hide more or less during the day, and comes evening they begin to sing. <laughs> and you hear this chorus of, I might almost say, a Midsummer Night's dream chorus. Mm -hmm. So this is a frog world. Mm. It is the world of the fading light of the hazy uh, mood, the fogs rising. Uh, it is a world that is other than our technical, rational world. This is why the frogs are being killed. So this is, and it is, it is the opposite. A frog world is other than the yes, no, black, white right wrong world and this is where that goes here this is this is in other words it is better to visualize images rather than symbols in the in the transmitted sense this means that and that means this imagine look here the thing visualize the mafia of Mugabe and there comes a frog and defies it. Feel those two worlds colliding. And there comes the mafia with this sharp cutting, yes, no, no, problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's the way to approach it. Right. The mafia is shivering in their timbers right now as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> So it needs imagination, sensitivity, and feeling in into the mood. It needs an artistic approach.
Well, um, this is not my normal behavior. What? <laughs> Being exposed. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, this you can already note as a symptom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you about a dream last night. And basically they're just fragments of a dream. So the first one that I remember is um, uh, it looks like being an either, the bu a building looks like the place where I work, either a hospital or like, it looks like that. And um, I was going into this room, which is sort of like a part of a room of someone else, but that was where I was going to stay that night. And that someone else could be like, it wasn't my mother, but it was somebody... In the hospital? In the hospital, or an office building, or something like that. Um, and this room uh, was a very, very tiny room, actually. And there were only two things that supposedly were mine in that room. And that was um, a bamboo steamer. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Um, and um, a box of crackers. And I remember picking up the bamboo steamer and the box of crackers into this little table um, that was right next to this window. That was, the window was actually on the floor. That was the only window in that room. Um, on the floor level, you mean? On the right floor here? level, yeah. like right here. And there was a tiny white table that was in there, and I put the bamboo steamer over there, and I put the box of crackers on the other side because I didn't want the other person to notice that I was... When I did that, this feeling was that the crackers was not very nourishing, and I was a bit embarrassed that I had it. And then when I was in the process of putting that in, the, in that table, I noticed that the window had bars in it. There was no glass uh, covering, but there was a screen uh, that was torn on one side. And I could see the bottom, um, out of the window, I could see through the parking garage of the building. So I could see people walking down there. And I can remember thinking that I would be breathing the exhaust of those of the cars in the parking garage and that wasn't very very pleasant feeling and also I can remember thinking that if I have to take my clothes off in that room I have to turn off the light because they might be able to see me mm -hmm. the next image that came up was I think I was supposedly walking someplace, but I noticed that there was this, um, it looks like a movie star, a female movie star or something like that in this gathering. And she was in the process of undress uh, and her upper half of her body was exposed. She was supposed to be half naked, but she had actually a bra on that was part of her skin. The bra looked like it was just part of her skin. And I was, can remember as I walked by when I saw that, I said, why is she doing that? And the last scene of that dream was, uh, I went out to the lobby of that building and I saw basically people dressed in their, like they have nurses' uniforms or- the what uniform? Nurses' uniforms mm -hmm. or like a doctor's, those gowns and stuff. And I was watching a woman in there, uh, it was raining outside and I was watching a woman go outside, she was waiting for someone or looking for somebody and she waited outside uh, and it was cold and windy and, and it was raining and I was also thinking when I was watching that, that I said, why is she doing that? I mean, she could catch a cold or something like that. She but, was not adequately dressed in a uh, She was dressed, but it was, she, my thought was she could have waited inside the lobby rather than outside. And uh, I woke up. Mm -hmm. As I listen to this, I am struck already by a Rima's initial remark. It's all three dreams deal with exposure. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I had um, to backtrack a little. When this was announced yesterday, I um, found myself asking for the release form and going through all that motion and stuff like that and didn't really think anything about it, but that's not what I normally do or to volunteer for something like this. And um, I was thinking about that last night and I said, whoa, <laughs> I'm going to be sitting there and Expose you're yourself. going to be dissecting things. <laughs> And then I'm going to have to look at certain things that, uh, I, I mean, I have no problem looking at certain things. I am not necessarily, I don't necessarily want to do it in front of God and everybody else. True. But in general, apart from this special occasion, what is your issue with exposure? With being seen? or being seen uh, without defenses, being seen as you are, I don't know what... Uh... Well, it's um, a vulnerability. I mean, it kind of, um, it's private. It's, a part of me says it's none of anybody else's business. It's, what is anybody else's it's business? It's my sort of private agenda, etc. But on some levels, it must want it to come out because I'm here. But now, in the first dream, you are in somebody else's room, right? Yes, it was it's sort of like a part of somebody else's room. And then you note that yours are only those two little items. Now, why would anything in somebody else's room have to be yours? Or is it your room that isn't really your room? What is it was that? sort of my room temporarily, or that's where I was going to be. And actually there was a part of a feeling at that time that I was going into that room as I was being shown there that I, I was supposed to be happy about having a room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, As though you didn't deserve the privilege of having a room. Or something. It was. Yes. It, it didn't. The experience at that moment was. It was okay, but then when I noticed the window and I noticed that section of it and whatever. The window is barred. You said. The, the window was barred. What windows would be barred? Where, where do you find such <laughs> barred windows? There was no glass uh, covering, but yeah. just a screen, and the screen was torn True, off. True, but where does one find such barred windows? Jails. Jails. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And whose room was it? Who is the person? Well, it's supposedly, it's, supposedly it was my mother's, but it wasn't my mother's. It was like maybe like a female boss or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, what are the qualities of that female boss? She's actually on the outside very uh, uh, gracious. Um, seems to be fairly, you know, it's like uh, she actually gives me quite a bit of freedom. I, I work at UCSF, uh, the intensive care unit, and um, I work there part-time. I come in when I want to come in, <laughs> pretty much, and I leave when I'm done, and I don't really have to ask a lot of permission or whatever, whatever, as long as I get the work done, it's, it's fine. Uh, and she has a punishing streak to her. Um, you almost don't want to be to get on her bad side because she can, in a sort of a nice kind of way, she can What's her strike. Agenda? What's her agenda? She wants to be supported. She wants to be, on some levels, nurtured. She wants to have somebody on her side. Um, Why? She doesn't like, although she puts up the appearance of wanting to be, I hope nobody, anyone here knows her. <laughs> what was it? I just had a horrid thought. I said, I hope that's, nobody that's here knows her. 
<clears throat> Anyhow. Uh, then what would happen? She can lash out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's... <clears throat> it's a nastiness that's covered in niceness. That so it's a stuff. nice front, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> it says you're either for me or you are against me. Mm -hmm. Where might that be you? Well, I can have a very nasty street. And actually, ever since I was a little girl, I promised myself not to have a nasty, not to play out that nasty side. And um, partly because of watching. Yeah, but you see, this nasty streak of hers comes from a, through a sense of insecurity, really. She does not trust her mm -hmm. own resources. Mm -hmm. Therefore, she needs to be always uh, buoyed up and, uh, mm -hmm. and being told she's, she's fine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, she gets rattled. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yeah. I mean, you. Where is that in me? Is that a question? Yes. How much space did your mother give you? Out of nine children, I'm the only, I was the only one with my own room. You were the only one with your own room, so one didn't have much space. <clears throat> but that was partly because I had tantrums. Mm -hmm. I put up a snip. What? Uh, who called it a tantrum? Everybody. I mean, it wasn't a very quiet tantrum. Can you recall the feel of the tant those tantrums? My, fe my yes. fear or feeling? No, your feeling. What? It usually would come up. I really did not like anybody touching my stuff, like my hairbrushes or my books mm -hmm. or my clothes and things like that. They were personal. They were my things. And um, in the Philippines, which is where I grew up, um, Everybody shares things, mm -hmm. you know, it's like they, people will go into your room and will use your stuff and, and think nothing mm -hmm. of it. It's not, not so much a malicious kind of thing or whatever it is, but it's normal. I guess I was not normal because <laughs> um, it had bugged me. I mean, I was really upset. I felt violated when people would use my stuff or, or go through my things if I had set it up in a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. So I would scream and yell. Yes. I mean, I would really get very angry. So you were, in a way, a cuckoo's egg. You were some, somebody with a in sense of individuality in a totally tribal uh, situation, mm -hmm. which would make you feel a little bit weird. I was called that. You were called weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was the one who, um, instead of playing with everybody else, I would walk to the river, for instance, in the middle of the river, and I would sit there and watch the sunset. And that's where I found... But you were also then given to understand that you shouldn't be like that. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yes. I mean, um, and at the same time, you know, it's like, yeah. How, where is this feeling now that you shouldn't be the way you are? Hmm. It comes up every once in a while, so to speak. For the most part, I have permission. <coughs> I think if you talk to my friends, I have fairly wide permission to speak. From them? Mine. But from you? <laughs> I get it. <laughs> you see, the dream puts you into a jail-like situation, mm -hmm. into a space that hopefully is your space, but it isn't yours. It isn't, we will see what those two things are, but it is jail-like, mm -hmm. and it is somebody else's space. It is the space of the boss, of the bossy attitude that has a sense of uh, either you're with me or you're threatening me. It's a, bit, a little bit of a paranoid attitude, easy, mm -hmm. easily rattled, easily threatened. And that deprives you of your own space, really. You cannot call that space your own. Mm -hmm. 
So you are trying to be yourself, but in a way these old conditionings don't permit you to be yourself. Mm-hmm. Because there's obviously feeling wrong, 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 bad, weird, 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 weird. Right? Yeah. And well. Well, that's opening. And now, what have you got there? What about the bamboo steamer and the, what was the other? Box of crackers. Uh, tell me what, what I, I really don't know what the bamboo steamer <laughs> is. <laughs> it's actually a Chinese cooking thing mm-hmm. where they, um, they put, I don't know what they call them. Um, God, we have a name for that in the Philippines. Um, but I forget what the Chinese thing... What its function? To heat up or cook things in. Now, how does it differ from an uh, Occidental steamer? What is unique, peculiar about that particular It's implement? just a bamboo steamer. It has three levels to it. You put things in it and it's a way to steam, uh, cook stuff, food by steaming. Is it made of bamboo? Mm-hmm. How does bamboo withstand fire? Oh, it's not. It's put on top probably of a walk or something. I, I've never used it or anything like that, so I don't know exactly. But I would imagine it's put on some other contraption. And the f- Why? How come you haven't used it? How do I you know about it? I just don't have it. it. But I've seen it. You know, I'm in... The Chinese, you go to Chinatown and stuff like that, or in the Philippines, and people use them. But I don't. I've never what used. is to you the peculiar, particular air of Chinatown, China, Philippines? What? How can you give me a sense of crowded? Uh, crowded. Mm-hmm. And what is the function of a steamer? I was thinking that in the dream somewhat. I thought it was peculiar that it was there. Maybe it was a reminder of Why do you steam being crowded. Things? What was that? Why do you steam things? Why do you need a steamer s- for? Well, if, if you look at just the functional stuff, it's just a cooking way. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but if you're going to look at it in some other kind of way... Such as? Steam up. Okay, but the function of the steamer is to steam up. That's what it is for. I mean... And how do you... What about you? Probably steaming up. What steams you up? What steams me up? To be... To be... Suppressed. To be told to shut up. Mm -hmm. To... um, not be who I am. And how do you feel about it when you get steamed up? How do you feel about yourself when you stay steamed up? Being strangled. By what? It's just like death. It's just like the life is being squeezed out of you. The restriction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The restriction that says you shouldn't get angry, you shouldn't get mm-hmm. hot. Mm-hmm. I could use a Kleenex. <laughs> it's on my, I uh, think, in the pocket of my sweater. Thanks. This is not a clinic, but it will do. Thanks. And what about the crackers? 
eats dead food. I mean... How do you view practices? How do I view it as food? Mm -hmm. It's dead food. What makes it dead? It <laughs> processed. Um, why are they why are they being used at all? What sort of seems to commend them? Let me uh, connect that with um, a lot of times I would eat crackers when I'm on the run, so to mm -hmm. speak, um, when I, I don't have time to sit down and eat mm -hmm. proper food, or what I call proper food. Or, so it's just make do. Yeah, so I have to make do with, because there are other things to be done and stuff like that. And my body gets really annoyed with me when um, that happens too often. Every once in a while. You know, and it happens, it's understandable, it's okay, it's cool, but it's like when it gets to be a habit, if you will, if it goes on for several days and so on and so forth, then my body gets really... And then yes. you are in the beginning in a hospital that is an office also. Are you working in any of those places? In what sort of place do you work? In a hospital. In a hospital. And what about the office part? I shared the office with my boss, oh. not, not the female boss, but a male boss. And how do you feel about your work there? My male boss? What did you say? How do you feel about your work at the hospital? <sighs> or what is your work situation, Johnny? I got the job, I sort of, well, for the past few months, actually, I have been looking at why I'm there. <laughs> I, I went for the job basically because primarily my, my interest in homeopathy, and, and I also was considering going to the uh, nurse midwif midwifery program at UCSF. Since I've had, I've never worked in a like healthcare setting as big as that, I thought I'd explore it. and see what it's like. Are you, are you going to learn homeopathy in a hospital? No. <laughs> but it was, my idea was basically, it's like uh, to use homeopathy as a certified nurse midwife. That yes. was my original thought, because I thought that was a good way to combine two. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I started working there and so on and so forth, and I got to see what was happening, I just felt like, um, well, to put it another way, I grew in an aversion to the place. <laughs> mm -hmm. And based on what? Well, it's... Um, I have been saying that I, I want to... At this point of my life, I want to be able to be in a space where I am validated as a spirit in a human body, etc., etc., in everything that I do and in my environment. And being in that space does not do that. Mm -hmm. And how and why doesn't it do it? Why doesn't it, how and why doesn't it validate it? Well, I, in my enthusiasm, I talk about homeopathy to everybody. And I've mm, they tell you you're weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and being involved in some weird medicine or something mm -hmm. like that, and et cetera, et cetera. And Okay, now then see, the dream puts you into the psychological space of feeling a weird. Feeling being a weirdo, as you were from childhood on. Mm -hmm. So you somehow... Uh, well, uh, Recreated uh, yes. it. And there you are in a space that isn't your space. I know that is jail-like, not in the geography field there, but in this inner space. I know. And all you have, your own, is that being on the run deal, 
and the cooker. They're getting hot. Yeah. Now, when you get hot, or you feel strangled. What was you, that? you said you feel strangled when you get uh -huh. hot. Uh -huh. But the strangler is also here. Because the cooking pot <coughs> is a very valuable means of us for preparing and assimilating food. Mm -hmm. And you have went in the I Ching number 50, the Ting, mm -hmm. the sacrificial vessel. Mm -hmm. So uh, as though that heat that rises in you is your most precious possession. But you don't allow it. That's true. Not, yeah. And I, I, I know that. You are telling yourself now, I should comply, I should be humble, I should <coughs> toe the line, and if I don't do it, something's the matter with me. Not with them, but with me. Well, I'm not very humble. But you acted, you imposed it upon yourself. It's, yeah, it's, um, I use humor a lot to get my point. And actually that does get me a lot of, get me a lot of space. True, Some but the, the dream deals with your relation to yourself. Yeah. We cannot apply this to the outer world. It makes no sense because you are not in such a space. Mm -hmm. That space description fits you psychologically. Your non-permissiveness towards yourself, towards being what you are. Yeah, I was, I guess since I was a little girl, I was always afraid that if I allowed myself to be nasty, or what I consider nasty, by telling somebody off, so to speak. A cooker is not an explosive, an, uh, an explosive thing. A cooker cooks, puts on the heat gradually and mm -hmm. transforms things. It's not land mine. You see, yeah. but if you strangle the cooker, then it may explode. Yeah. So your medicine is your illness, and your illness <laughs> is really the cure. I figured as much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. In other words, when you get hot, it would it make, I have to call for the question, what's cooking? <laughs> what is it that wants to be changed, transformed, assimilated, rather than going it out? You cook probably for good reason, and then you have to find out what's, what wants to come into life. You probably get hot when things are, when you, you allow things to happen that go against your grain. Or when you have just successfully put yourself down again. Or I do something that I don't really want to do. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. I sort of make jokes about it. I say things like uh, duty and responsibility doesn't suit me and whenever I force myself to do it, I get in trouble or something like that, but, yeah, get it. And to make do and being on the run and hush, 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 is dead food. Doesn't nourish, doesn't sustain you. Mm -hmm. mm. In our second dream. My second dream? Yeah. They were just, Fragments. I've, I've, can you tell it again? The second? There was. Uh, I was watching. I was sort of walking, like, towards some place, and just on one side, sort of like in peripheral, or peripheral vision, I could see this woman. And she, I don't recognize who she is or anything like that, but it appeared like she was a movie star, and she was undressing. And actually, people. There were other people with her who were also... I could only see this part of the body. So she was a bit exhibitionistic. I'm not 
so sure if that was the feeling of it. No, she had the uh, hump. Yeah, yeah it, she had, ex sorry, except she had a brow on, but her brow was part of her skin. I mean, I can remember looking closely at that. It's sort of like looking at close up at your dream, and it's just that noticing that peculiarity and I thought, why well, is she who doing is that? It, who is that movie star, anyone in particular? I How do you feel about movie see. stars? Um, center yeah. stage. Um, mm -hmm. uh, bigger than life. Exaggerated. Why would somebody want to be a movie star? Attention. Mm -hmm. For the attention. Mm -hmm. And what about this? Skin like bra. <clears throat> that was bustling. I mean, I mean, for all practical purposes, she was bare, but she wasn't bare. I don't know. Why? Why would she use such a thing? Why would she do that? I connected it, actually, well, I asked that question in the dream. I said, why is she doing that? You know, why is mm, she... You connected it with what? I, with the risk, more of the risk of exposure. I mean, for my own trepidation towards having to expose. Yes, but how would such a skin-like bra affect or operate in this ambivalence about exposure? Well, I don't know. It's the only thing that I can think of is that it's sort of, there was a semblance of covering, but not really. Mm -hmm. So there is a wish to be center stage, get all possible attention. But to be covered too. But we can be yes, but not. But not. Mm -hmm. Get it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, again, there's nothing illegitimate about being a movie star. No. But you feel illegitimate about the wish to be center stage. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't mind being... <laughs> I give myself permission to be center stage if I was doing something that wasn't too personal. And it's not you again, is that this? <laughs> You're just too... But again, you see, what it amounts to is, I may not be there. I must not be seen, I must not be heard, I must... And if I... If the natural urge to be what I am, you feel... Uh, yeah. Yeah. And the third... It was some, I think she was a nurse at the hospital or something like that. She was, she went outside in the lobby, went to the door and she, I think waiting for someone or something, she, she, like giving a message, she had to give a message to someone. I'm not entirely sure what, but at any rate, waiting. Um, and it was waiting rain. for what? Waiting for that event to occur, whether she was giving a message or getting a message or something. Um, and she was waiting outside where it was raining and it was cold. And I was. What uh, are you waiting for? What am I waiting for? For the event to occur. <laughs> waiting for Godot. No, uh, it's. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, Waiting for something that will change the situation. Mm -hmm. But only you can change it. Godot never comes. <laughs> Shucks, I was hoping somebody else would know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in so waiting, you needlessly expose yourself to trouble, to the elements in this case. That's true. 
That's happened a few times where I let somebody else sort of take charge or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't work. Time and time again, it doesn't work. It's my life, it's not somebody else. See, what this, in the gist of this is that the dream wants to draw your attention to the fact that you still share the belief system of your tribe, of yeah. your family. Yeah. That you have outwardly emancipated yourself, but inwardly you still believe in it. Mm -hmm. And that belief system you need to come to terms with. Yeah. And in this belief system you don't allow yourself to be yourself, to breathe, and to follow your own needs and inclinations and necessities. Yeah, things have to fall apart, or I have to put up a snit to change, or to effect a change that I want to occur, and that's not working anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to throw up a snit. I don't want to scream and yell. With this belief system, if an outward change occurred, you would either feel you have no right to avail yourself of it, or you would bend it right back into the home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that ruined my image. Here I thought, you know, no. no just kidding. No, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. What did you want to say? <laughs> I was going to say something smarter. Smart. They are the put on again. I was basically going back to, I guess, the mask, so to speak. Referring to my image. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't fit anymore. No space. No. Thanks. Allow the cooker to create enough steam to get you to turn your wheels. Terence, if you have a right to be angry. I have a right to be dissatisfied. I have a right to want something. The, what I wanted to show in this demonstration is that you have to hang on to any of the dream image until you get to some emotional issue. by asking, asking, asking what the feel of it, the relevance is, and what you have heard. And to persist in asking until you strike gold. The difficulty generally with dream work, beginners also with experience, is that either too quickly a uh, definition is put on it, or that too quickly uh, the prior to the real affect response, the question of the search is stopped. And the issue is never, or at least rarely, an abstract one. It is always something that touches and concerns the immediate being in the here and now. Even when you deal with uh, mythological archetypal images, they show broad human, general and spiritual issues. 
but they have to be they are of no significance unless they are lived appropriately it means in a way that is contingent with its person's nature here and now therefore you see the dream is not to be explained the dream is to be experienced and the function then of the other is not to interpret it but to help the dreamer to get to the experiential truth of what the dream is trying to convey any further ultimate final questions anything so everything is fine and clear and you can do it now yes come on does anyone have questions about this case in particular before i uh... anything this is a free for all now my question was just what do you think um, would have been the effect of giving a homeopathic remedy in this case and uh, would it have helped uh, bring the uh, unconscious issue forward the unconscious issue was quite forward yeah See. During this, yeah. But if this had, if you hadn't, the remedy. Suppose I had given, let's say, natriumuria ignatia here. It would have improved the mood temporarily at best, and after a while we are right back where we are. Okay. Okay. Because here is a life issue that wants, well, that it will not let go right. until you deal with it. Right. So with life issues, the um, function of the homeopathic remedy. He's helped you deal with them, but it won't do the dealing for you. Right. You have to look at them. Yes. Will they, will they help um, actually bring one to the surface for you to look at? At times it may happen, yeah. yes. Okay. But if that happens, you sometimes wish it hadn't happened. Mm -hmm. Because it will do it in a rather forceful and not necessarily pleasant way. Okay. Maybe in the terms of a genuine aggravation. Right, aggravation. Yes. And it might not be the right time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, that was my question. Thank you. I have a couple questions, so if other people want to ask questions, you can interrupt me. Um, you have good questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Um, what happens when you prescribe a homeopathic remedy from your experience and the, there's an aggravation of the psychological symptoms? But the physical symptoms improve. That's that. Then you have to. Then it brings forth what has to be dealt with. It's the same dynamic as when you give a remedy that is similar but not similimum, and it brings out symptoms now that point to the similimum. Mm -hmm. So what's happening here? It says, fine, fine, good. I do something, but look, that is what you have to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. and, and do you see cases where the psycho psychology gets worse and the physical symptoms remain the same? I mean, a person has arthritis and then they go through a healing crisis and they actually then, uh, psychologically, and then they even get better, but the arthritis is still there and they seem the same. And they're going through a healing crisis from the remedy? Mm -hmm. Well, then, A, I would still confront the psychological issue. Mm -hmm. And B, I would, if this is adequately dealt with, I would look where this remedy may have been inadequate, mm -hmm. where it needs a complementation or was insufficiently close or whatever. Okay. But you see, <coughs> There's another point here. Arthritis doesn't equal arthritis. Yeah, I just gave that as an example, but... In other words, if it's just this subchronic, slightly uh, creepy thing, then I called you yesterday a ransom you pray. Yeah, right. that was nice. But if you have, the point is, if you get something really disturbing or disabling, it has not been touched, then you have to deal with it in terms of what presents itself. 
in sum, any therapeutic approach that does not hit quite the center, but off the center, may bring forth a compensatory me-me from the other side. Attend to me, whether this be physical or psychological. But by and large, you know that it's what Kent already expresses, when you get an aggravation and no adequate improvement after that, either you have an insufficient reactive capacity, whatever that may be, or you have some factor that resists because it isn't taken care of, it may be, or you have the wrong remedy. Speaking of that, the wrong remedy, how often have you seen, after giving just a single dose, a proving take place? And sometimes. Sometimes, yes. Yeah, 5%, 10%, 2%? No, no well, not the good with statistics. Can you, but, uh, but it's more once a month or even just a couple times a year? Well, shall we say a sufficient uh, number of times to make me alert to that possibility. There, here's the point. With very Neptunian people, you have to be awfully cautious. And what yeah. do you mean by Neptunian people, so people that aren't familiar with that? People where the psychic borders are not clearly defined. So oversensitive people oversensitive. who feel, who are semi-mediumistic or, or in negative sense mediumistic, easily affected by all sorts of factors. People with relatively uh, insufficient separation from uh, from the surrounding world. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's as you call them weak egos or something, but it is a matter of ins in not quite inadequate I-it. Mm -hmm. And there I have even seen a single dose of 30 giving an aggravation. Right. And I know one case, one person, you know, where, where it is simply not safe to use homeopathy. Right. I think a number of people, have, practitioners have noticed that there are hypersensitive or yeah, yes. panallergic people. Uh, but do you find that, uh, have you ever been able to treat someone that's been very sensitive? Do, and did you go with higher potencies or lower potencies in such cases? Well, this person, uh, <laughs> yeah, overreacts to any potency. But in that case, I would go to lower potencies. Lower potencies. 12x. But I have e seen... Even just in a couple doses or a single dose? Single dose, single, single dose of the six okay. I have seen an aggravation approving from a single dose of causticum, 12x. Okay. Single dose of that. Mm -hmm. So that exists. Well, causticum people all tend to be a bit sensitive anyway. Yeah, but... Uh, you, simply, you simply have to know that it's... You can run into that. And there's an interesting phenomenon in psychological areas where when a person develops a schizophrenic state that if they have chronic physical symptoms, they seem to dissipate. Right. And, then, right. and then as they get out of that schizophrenic state and begin getting a little bit healthier, the, the physical symptoms mm -hmm. come back. I mentioned such a case, such a case yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. She got an acardium. The psychological regime improved. She got his terrible arthritis. Yes. Right. Yes. It's yeah. known, after all, that schizophrenics don't don't have many physical symptoms. Right. It's quite fascinating because then, of course, they they get these physical symptoms, and then they go to the doctor, and the doctor treats them, and, and they <laughs> right they go back into their yeah. schizophrenic yeah. state. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know it much about it? Did you have any interaction? And this might have been before your time, but the Middletown Academy? No. Okay. The Middletown um, Academy was um, in Middletown, New York, which was a hospital. And uh, at that time, it was called an insane asylum, but a mental health institution. And they had a statute, I remember. Well, they had, it was a homeopath, a very a large homeopathic, homeopathic uh, yes. mental institution. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering if you knew much about it. I knew only that fact, that this is still on the books. Yeah. yeah. Although, of course, obviously not enforced, yes. 
And uh, perhaps finally, uh, have you had any experience with the box flower remedies? Yes. Talk about it. I had them put in test, and I had them run up actually all the way to the 200 and oh. them. And uh, I was not particularly impressed. <laughs> but uh, I must say, perhaps I, I do not use them consistently enough. I use them, uh, I take them into consideration by their limited symptomatology in terms of constitutional approach. And I test them, and uh, once or twice, uh, one, one of them came through and worked. Mm -hmm. But otherwise... Yeah. Or maybe they yeah. are just better in the lower potencies. It could they, be, yes. Lower potencies have a more broader spectrum effect. Mm -hmm. The higher mm -hmm. po you, my, my theory is, is the higher the potency you use, the more precise you have to be. You have to be that absolute Absolutely. Zen archer. Correct, yes. Yes. But also, the more deeply do you score. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I can remember one case. I carry a box rescue remedy with me all the time. And there was once when I was very shaken up and rattled, I took it and it helped. So that's... Um, which direction would you like homeopathy to go? Give me a choice. <laughs> um, North. Right. <laughs> no less, um, me about right, right. I mean, what are your hopes for homeopathy, I suppose? Where do you want it to go? Into a more precise uh, capacity of uh, remedy application and choosing mm -hmm. the diagnosing. Mm -hmm. I do not want it to be the dominant school of medicine mm -hmm. because A, I don't believe this is possible and because I feel if something of the sort happens we would be saddled with the same sort of quacks that we had in homeopathy at the beginning of the century. Mm -hmm. It would go down, down the tube again. I do believe that homeopathy is a privilege of the few. It's an aristocratic, if you want to approach mm -hmm. medicine. And nature is not democratic. That's very interesting, yeah. So we are a special sect, for better or worse. Right. Okay, thanks. But uh, my expectations are not necessarily God's plan. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> and I will not stand in the way of its expanding. <laughs> um, I want to go back to the frogs and the um, idea of whatever it is that's unmanifest manifesting in the physical world. And what's happening now is that the frogs on all continents and in all different kinds of climates are becoming extinct for reasons that we don't know. We know them. Not totally. We know, we know in general that we're going down the tubes. Yeah, but, but we know that we are poisoning the planet also. Right. Let me get to my question yeah. part of it. Um, <laughs> I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, so this, my question goes back to something that Rajan Sankara mentioned that when whatever it is that's manifesting in the real world becomes extinct, that energy has to come out somewhere else. And I'm wondering, is that going to come out with, since it can't come out in the right way, namely making frogs, is it going to come out in pathologies that we can't treat because we don't have the frog remedies? What do you think that energy is going to do once it becomes extinct? I wouldn't be ready to put it that specific. I could conceive of that answer. But you see, that frog energy is a bit of what I call, might call for lack of a better name, a magical energy. Mm -hmm. It's the energy of hobgoblins, elves, and so on. And that energy is both physical but also psychic energy. 
and energy, any energy that is repressed becomes obsessive. So I would be inclined to say that this repression uh, is bound to hit back at us in an obsessive, destructive fashion. You could say, for instance, that uh, the frogs uh, are turning into ticks. Mm. With Lyme's disease. Yes, for instance. How do you know that's not? Mm -hmm. It's also a rather mushy, psychotic, slimy mm -hmm. state and negative. And uh, look what's happening all over the world. If that's, it's not obsessive, I don't know what is obsessive. So it is, uh, it may be as specific as that, but for that matter, you see, we don't, the frog remedies are not very prominent in material medical well, anywhere. My, you said we have improved everything, and my, yes. my feeling is, you know, if we had the frog remedies, maybe we could do something about this, but even the possibility of the remedies is being taken. Are you telling me if you had the frog remedies, you would stop uh, the fouling up of, uh, of I the don't earth? Know. I can't say. I cannot hear you often. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just wondering. You know, what are we going to do when this happens? This, if there's, a, if there's a way we could do something. But I wanted to see specifically what you said about what happens when the energy becomes extinct. Okay, I'm, I will answer that one. <clears throat> because that question, I get again and again from patients. What can I do? There is only one thing that I can do, that is be conscious. If the world, the, the destiny of the world depended upon what we do, we would have gone to hell long ago. Mm -hmm. The same question was, for instance, asked about a nuclear bomb, about the bomb, what can I do? And I give the same answer. It doesn't depend upon what we do, except that we face the issue and be touched by the issue formed. Fortunately, our destiny is in the, is in the hands of, high up, of other powers. And we need to be aware of that too. You see the same thing. Uh, historically, go back to the history of the, of, the, of the Second World War. Hitler had occupied all of Europe. No hope. England was prone. What did he do? He attacked Russia. The stupidest things done. Mm -hmm. Whom the gods want to perish, the rob of their mind. We were afraid of the nuclear explosion. What happened? Russia cracked up. Did we do anything to it? Did it depend upon us? I see. But the fact that attention is paid, that one is aware of one's responsibility, that is the most moving factor. Another example, a very, a very practical one. <coughs> In supervisory seminars, in this uh, unreasoned training, for instance, again and again, it happens a candidate describes a situation where he's stuck, doesn't know what to do. It's then examined, and always the counter-transference is looked at. What are your stakes in it? What is your own involvement in it? What's amiss with your attitude here? Yeah. Find it's taken in. Next time he comes back and says, would you believe it? Next time I saw the patient, situation was totally changed already, before I even opened my mouth. Now that's standard. Okay. So, as you are so speaks the world to you. As you are in touch with reality, so the reality confronts you. And that's really the only thing that you can do. Okay, thank you. Also to remember, whatever you fight, you are. <laughs> so look at the enemy there. So I have to look at my own frog. Yes, yes. Are you on the killer weapons? Mm -hmm. The purple in the water. So this follows a bit on that. Um, uh, 
whenever I meet you, I always enjoy it because I feel myself become larger and be able to touch it more mystery. You know, not be able to, un I don't have to understand as much. I can allow mystery to happen. But it's difficult for me to keep that sense of awe and mystery in my life. The, the, the telephones, the cars impinge again. And the, the uh, drive to understand and categorize and figure out tools. Well, yes. This drive, figuring out tools, is fine as long as you realize and remember where your limits are. But otherwise, I'd like to tell you a Hindu story. This is of a guy who comes to his guru and says, Master, you told me I am God. Now, how yesterday I walked on the street and there was a donkey coming. And since I'm God, I wouldn't get out of his way. And what you know, the donkey pushed me right off. So, what, how, why is it possible? I said to go with him, but my son, you have to remember that the donkey is God too. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so is the telephone. Yes. So are all the things. Yeah. And I can feel, in, at some times, I can feel that, that that's true for me. But it's difficult to stay in that state and, and hold all of that. Then I would say meditate and remind yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what meditation is for. To take stock, to take, st to, to take stock, where am I now, and to sort out of it. Now this is relevant, it's not, what is it all about? I couldn't function without daily meditation practice. To do yoga and the one day and then it's even the other. And the jogging too. And the jogging. <laughs> <laughs> and the remedy when it's necessary. <laughs> so my my second question was, how do you personally cope with the patients and seminar attendants thinking so highly of you? How do you keep yourself working on yourself? They're remembering that I didn't do it. I didn't mm -hmm. make myself. You know, this is um, okay. This is an actual experience. I <clears throat> I catch myself often saying something, and I wonder, where the hell did that come from? Yeah, I know that too. Yeah. I cannot take credit for it. Yeah, because it or I pick up something that's there, but I didn't figure it out. So it's again simply the awareness of my limitation, my own personal relative stupidity at the time. Yeah. Of sure, sometimes you hey, aren't you, ain't, ain't you great? Sure, okay, so then I tell you, well, are you really? Uh-huh. And the last one was, um, we talked a bit about this is the time of transformation, yes? And that the, there's a revolution. Pluto's close. What do you think it'll look like, the revolution? Where, what direction will it go? I don't know. Again, I'm no prophet. I don't I think this is impossible. To know? Yes, because we, we all, we, whenever we try to project into the future, we always do it in terms of the familiar. Again, take this conclusion. Who in the world would have expected and thought that Hitler would attack Russia? Or that the Soviet Union would have oh, yeah, yes. changed any? Yes. Yeah. It is when, when the powers go to work, it's always a totally unexpected totally irrational. Mm -hmm. You have gone this direction to assume now this is the way, but at a certain point it goes that way. Who is to know that? And to your question, to the realization that we can't know it also helps. Mm -hmm. Also, I would say to your question, I always daily watch my dreams and when I overstep my limits, I am not, not always kindly being reminded of it. So when I get too cock smart, it comes to the end. So, you know. Yeah, I was discouraged though that you, you said that we can't see our own dreams, that that's complete, that it's our shadow. Yeah, um, but you can do it with... With company. With company, yeah. yeah. And you know, when you're a little bit, some dreams are so drastic right. that you at least know that something stinks right now. Yeah. 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 
пока. Ну, good luck. This work is very painful for people, for my patients, for the people that were up here today. Terrifying. My question is, um, why, if it's something we're seeking, is it so terrifying and painful? And is there a way to make it easier for the patients? And if we make it easier, are we somehow taking something away from them? How would you make it easier? I don't know. The only answer I could give is that empathic and compassionate accompanying it is what you can offer. But and watching our own reaction, you see. Very often what makes it harder is our, our own uh, mm. nightly input. Why is it so painful when it's something we really want? Why is the ancient symbol of the earth a circle with a cross in it? Yeah. There's no answer to why, but it yeah. is. Yeah. It is the, the fact, the basic fact, that seemingly pain is indispensable for growth. Why this? Why it must be so? Why don't we have a kinder universe? I don't know. But any protest resolution, I will sign with you. Does the remedy, if you give a remedy before they get into things that are really painful, does that make it easier? No. Okay. Thank you. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> just try to keep here as long as we can. Pick up as many questions. <laughs> the, um, when Dana was talking, I was... I had a question about the LM potencies, if you'd had any experience with LMs or what your... I don't have enough experience. I'm only beginning to use to using them now, okay. so they are not competent. Okay. In fact, I keep asking myself those questions to, from those who do use them. Okay. And um, other therapies interfering with homeopathic? Well, we discussed it recently with uh, Michael. I know, in my, my myself, I got acupuncture and it upset it upset the whole apple cart. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I have read about it, also others observing it and claiming it. Perhaps it depends upon the skill of the acupuncturist, perhaps, perhaps not, I don't know, but it is possible, seemingly. Uh, do you know I know of another instance where it helped okay. and was in, and went along with the remedy. But uh, there's a question here. Did it just throw it off completely, the picture? Did it suppress something? Yes, it was repressed and threw it elsewhere. Threw it elsewhere. Okay. Herbology? Any? Well, herbology and allopathy are to me no different. Mm -hmm. Herbology gives crude doses on allopathic indications. So I don't care whether it's uh, uh, radix calamus or, or deadly nightshade or aspirin. It's always a, a, a crude substance given on contrarious indications. Also, in the beginning, um, yesterday, we were talking about um, what was happening with machines that potentized remedies, mm -hmm. and with uh, people that got well from like putting a piece of uh, paper around their neck, something like that. Yeah. And I just wondered what do you, I, I never got clear what you thought really was. I don't know. I, I yeah. only can see it, it demonstrates the, that we deal with substance that is not substance. It, uh, I try to answer it by dealing with the alchemical worldview. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It demonstrates it, but here you have a mystery. Yeah, yeah. it is amazing. Okay, that's all I had. Uh, Okay, also here, okay, enough. Enough. Well, thank you. Thank you very much.